great that they can uh, get out here and say what they want to say and make their feelings known. Do you think there's such a thing as police brutality? <laughs> I, I, I guess that's in the uh, opinion of whoever you're talking to. And it's all but a do relative you, Do you matter. feel that there is? Police brutality? There yeah. probably is on occasion, I imagine. As long as you've got human beings doing police work, there's always a chance of, uh, of misconduct and, uh, and, uh, and, and incorrect behavior. But I, I know uh, the greatest majority of the policemen on this department don't condone that kind of thing. One brother was shot uh, just a month ago. He didn't have any weapon. Uh, he had a piece of aluminum foil in his hands. They thought it was a gun. There, there must be a margin for error in that process because policemen sometimes have to act upon information as it appears to be, not as it later develops that the facts are. There's some very real psychological risks for policemen that in a sense uh, make cynics out of them. I work with a, an officer who uh, didn't feel like the criminal justice system gave enough justice <laughs> or gave enough punishment to the, to the criminal, so uh, he would always uh, choke the person out on the way to the station inside the police car. They have to end somewhere. There has to be a point where you say, well, maybe this was not an accident. Let's take it through the uh, so-called procedures. Let's find out. And I'm saying that that is not even being done. Why six shots? Why? Because it took the sixth shot before the guy went down. He was still coming at him. According to the witness, he had his arms above his head, so he was in a pose of, of submission, if you will. It, it isn't a bad shooting. It's an unfortunate thing, and it's very hard for the people to comprehend when you've got a nude man on arm. But the guy was maniacal, and he was coming at the officer. We know that in the case of the Burkholder shooting, it was the first situation in which Vandekamp, the district attorney, leaped in without waiting months and months and months and months for the police department to wrap up. And as a consequence of him leaping in immediately, he found an eyewitness to the shooting that the police department could not even find. And I think you have to give some credit to the watchdog coming in when he's supposed to come in as the incident occurs and coming up with useful evidentiary stuff. You do solemnly swear that the testimony you are about to give before this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I swear. How much time was there between the first two shots and the other shots that you heard? 